Hello everyone, it's Carrie from sunshineinmypocket.com. Today I've got some new stencils to share with you for our project and this is going to be a fun one because we're going to use some layering stencils. These are called wavy masking stencils and these come together and you can see that you can do one side and then mask it off and then do the other side. Really, really fun concept and I love it. And then I've got this one. This is the fancy shell stencil. These are all from Missing Stamps. And then I thought it would go together nicely with this Hippo Hooray stamp set. Also from Missing Stamps, some of the cutest little images in this stamp set. And we're going to use a handful of them. I have the brand new color of Distress Oxide and Distress Ink called Uncharted Mariner. And I'm going to use that today. This is my first time using it. And look at that. I already love it. Already love it. <laughs> it's kind of a darker blue, more of a peacock blue almost. And it's one of my favorite colors. And so obviously this is going to become a new favorite. I put that first layer on and now I am just inking on those layers. This almost looks like an ore to me now that I'm thinking of this uncharted mariner. I probably should have added some pixie spray to the back of this, but I thought I could hold it down just fine with these magnets. And I'm also holding it with my finger, but you can see that I am struggling just a little bit. It still worked out just fine. I was determined to make it work. I didn't fully blend that out because I wanted it to look a little like water and kind of a little mottled there. I also thought I was going to be doing a technique over the whole entire thing, but you'll see that plan changed just a little bit. Sometimes my cards are want to do that. Now I'm going to go ahead and place the other one over the top and you'll see as I ink this on, um, by the way, I'm using Stormy Sky now to go along with this new color. It adds just a little bit of lightness to this and I feel like it looks kind of like an ocean. As I remove this second stencil, you'll notice that there is a little bit of an overlap with this so it creates some really great white lines in between those sections. I love this design. It's so beautiful. Now here's the second stencil, the fancy shell stencil. I thought it looked a little bit like splashes, like water splashes. And so that's what I was going for. And now what I'm going to do is put that second stencil back over the top here and then I'm going to lay the fancy shell stencil there and I'm going to add some embossing paste. This is going to give the look of, or at least I hope so, this is what I was going for, the look of kind of like splashes, like frothy ocean waves, something, something like that. I originally thought I was going to put this over the entire panel, but when I saw those white lines between the design, I knew I wanted to keep that in the final design. So that's why I decided to use this layout instead and only use the embossing paste over that portion where I put the stormy sky ink. So I'll just finish doing this. It really helps to have a palette knife with a pointed end like this. I was able to get in between some of those magnets and it worked out really well. Now here's the reveal. I'm going to slowly peel off these stencils, being careful not to shift it, or at least I'm really trying. See how I'm holding on to that first stencil? And then I'll pull those off really carefully. And there's our splash design. I'm going to just go around the edges with my fingers to get any excess embossing paste off the edges. And there you go, that is looking really good. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off all my tools and my stencils. And now I decided while this is still a little wet, why not add a little glitter? So I have some dazzle dust from missing, but I decided I just wanted a really light glitter for this. I didn't want it to change colors. I just wanted it to be kind of iridescent. So I'm using some of this iridescent glitter here. Actually, this is the rock candy glitter, distress glitter. I'm just pouring a little bit over here and there on that wet embossing powder and that'll grab onto that glitter and hang on. We will have to let this dry and then I will wipe off any excess glitter at the end after it's dry. But look at that, I hope you can see that a little in the video. It's really, really pretty. 
Now I can go ahead and color up my images. I've chosen one of the hippos from this set, a few of the fish and a turtle, a couple of those plants from the sea life plants there. And then I'm gonna put this bird right on top of that hippopotamus. I moved all the other stamps off and now I'm putting this right there so the bird is kind of landing on his head. And I just really love that because I'm gonna be able to cut this out together and have this match that sentiment that I wanna use which says, hippo birdie to you. So that's why I did that. I'm gonna go ahead and color these up with Copic markers now, starting with some cool grays. I'm mapping out the darkest areas here with my C3 layer of ink and then I'll go in with my C1 and just kind of blend that out. Now you can see that it's sort of blending into each other a lot here. I'm gonna go back over it with C5, an even darker shade, and then I'll blend out with the medium and then blend out again with the C1. So you'll see that here, I'm adding the C5 now, just to where it might be the darkest, just on all those shadow areas that I'm going through with the C3 once again, kind of blending that through, elongating some of those lines, and then going back over it with the C1. I also went over his toenails with the C1, so they're kind of a light gray. And we'll be adding a little more detail to this hippo a little bit later. I'm adding a little bit of pink there on his ears, and now let's give him a little contour. <laughs> make him look a little thinner by going in with the darker colors, blending that out again, once again. And his muzzle there, I just went over with the C1. It's a nice light gray. So there we go. There's our hippo. Now here's where I'm gonna start adding some dots. I'm using the darkest color and I'm just adding a few here and there where it's going to be the darkest. I like to do this sometimes when I have an animal that I wanna show has scaly, skin or even some fur sometimes. Now I'm gonna go over it with the C1, or I'm sorry, C3, the medium color. And I'm just kind of blending out a little bit further than what I did with the C5. And this is gonna help kind of blend those through. And then I'll go over all of it with the C1, adding a few more dots as I go, kind of spreading those out a little bit more. I like to start with the body and then I'm gonna go on to his head as well. So here's where we'll add some C5 dots, just little tiny dots. These are not very big at all, but they add just that idea that he has kind of scaly skin, like he might need some lotion, this guy. <laughs> He's so cute though. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put my cool markers cool gray markers away and now we'll color up some of the fish and that bird, I want him to be a blue bird with a yellow belly, why not, right? You can make up any colors you want. And then we'll go ahead and add some darker blue to him as well. The BG07, I believe that is. And then blend that out with the B00. So this is gonna give him some a little bit of drama I'm gonna color in those leaves, the kelp or the seaweed, and then I'm also gonna use some of those same colors on the turtle and some of the same blues that we used on the bird, I'm also gonna use on that turtle. I like to use a lot of the same colors throughout for purposes of continuity, making everything feel like it goes together. So this turtle is a little bit blue and a little bit green. He's cute, isn't he? I'll finish coloring up those fish. This guy was upside down, but no worries. <laughs> I'll put him right side up on the card. And now I've cut everything out, and this is basically gonna be the layout that I'm going for. But before I attach all of those critters, I want to stamp the sentiment right on there. So I'm just gonna put it in my Misty and stamp that down using some black ink. Hippo birdie to you. I'll stamp it a couple of times to get a nice dark impression. And there is our image and our sentiment. So let's go ahead and attach all these images. 
I'm going to pop up the hippo and the little bird with some foam tape and see how I cut them out to be together. Now I'm also getting rid of some of that excess glitter there and cleaning up my area from that glitter using my surface sweep. This comes in really handy sometimes. I'll glue down that seaweed with some liquid adhesive, pop up the hippo and the bird right over the top, and then I'll also glue down the fish and the turtle will also be popped up with foam tape. So we have a little bit of dimension and some of that are glued directly to the card. There's also a little dimension and texture with that embossing paste in the background on that stencil. A little bit of glitter too. It's hard to see that in the video. That little turtle is the last one to be added. And then we'll attach this to a card base that's 110 pounds. So it'll give it a nice weight. And there we go. Here's a closer look at our card for today. Wasn't this a fun one to make? I thought it was fun. I had a good time and I hope you did too and got some great ideas. These are really fun ideas for masking and adding embossing paste to just a portion of your card, maybe a little glitter. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps out with YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll be back real soon with more card making inspiration. Bye-bye.